feel the light about your problem inside tonight. Yes, elated and slightly tired. I reckon. <laughs> how, how long does it take you after a show to wind down? Do you, do you now go on sort of... Good half hour. Good yeah. half hour. <laughs> she winds me down after... Low it's what, 10 years since you first came to Australia? 11. Right? Yeah, 11. Yeah. And Wings is now three years old? Yes, approximately. Yeah. The, the thing is that uh, I know you've gone very hard, you've tried very hard to have it known as Wings, but it ends yeah. up being called Paul McCartney and Wings. Well, that's fair enough for the time being, you know, but, uh, you know, eventually, a lot of people just call it Wings. It doesn't matter. We don't mind, you know. Did you ever really want to Whatever say they call us, call us anything but Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Especially tomorrow morning. But she, did you ever want to try and get away from being a name and get back into just a group call? Was that the idea? Of well, that's the idea of kind of calling it Wings, yeah, because it was never Paul McCartney and the Beatles. Right. You know, so there's no point really in having Paul McCartney and Wings. Of course, yeah. But, you know, till the people know it as Wings, we don't mind if they call it, whatever they call it, as I say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Linda, uh, of course, you, you've been with the group uh, started. <laughs> Sure. And how, how much how much um, deliberation was there as to whether or not you'd join the group? Um, not much, actually. Uh, Paul asked me to join, and I didn't know much in the beginning, but I've grown with Jimmy here and Paul here and Joe. It went something like this. I said, do you want to join the group? <laughs> and she said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, girl. <laughs> that was about it. Just one of God's smooth talkers. You talk to him. That's it. Smooth talking. Smooth talking. There was a little joke about that, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah. No way. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. I'd like you to introduce the other guys in the group yeah, and just tell us a little about them. First of all, over here, we have Joe English. And uh, <laughs> this is the uh, famous drummer here who is American. He's yeah. from he plays from New York. Joe. He plays the drums in 1516 time. <laughs> Which is a big guitar player, sir. That's Joe. Joe. So that's Joe Cabot. Linda, 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 you know. Linda, we know. Over here from the uh, Melbourne Ambulance Brigade, <laughs> yes. we have Mr. James McCulloch, who is our lead guitar player. Welcome, Mr. McCulloch. Thank you. And over here, reading a wings bar. The GTH is uh, always great. It's very nice to know what we're doing in this world, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's just checking out now. Yeah. This is the baby of the group, right? He's the youngest, yeah. <laughs> Get your bed! Jimmy, I, I, Jimmy you're, uh, you're about 21 or so. I'm 22. 22, oh, he's older than I thought he was. Yeah, he's it's deceptive, up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How old were you when, uh, when the Beatles started? I was about two old. You are about 12. Did you remember the much? I mean, were you a big fan of theirs? Were you a big fan of Paul? Well, maybe three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Couldn't stand them, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I know I was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Jim's given a solid opinion. That was the most amazing one. Sorry, Billy. Lindy, you've got the family out here with you. There you go. Sure. What ages are they? Um, four, six, and twelve. <laughs> and they love it here. In fact, we all love it here. Right? Yeah, listen, right. just while we got the opportunity, we'd just really like to say, you know, it may sound a bit of a cliche, but we really all love Australia. Beautiful country, cover. <laughs> really? Well, of course, last time you were here, you hardly got to see a thing of it. What did you, what do you remember? Just hotel rooms and uh, Yeah, cars? I just remember hotel rooms and a rainforest I walked through once, but that was your lot. Yeah. Uh, and a few Australian people climbing up hotels and stuff, you know. But this time, we've seen a lot more of the countryside and a lot more of the people and stuff, and uh, we're going home. Big hand for us. But it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. get the Prime Minister to respond to that, but we don't know yeah, which one it is. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, John Denver came through recently and uh, he made some... <laughs> we hear that he walked in grass, yeah. Yes, that's right. Well, he made some statement about grass because he got the most incredible uh, publicity from uh, press. Also, when Frank Sinatra was out here, he only made a couple of mentions so all of a sudden he got blasted across the front pages. Oh, yeah. Are you playing it very cool or are you just... Uh, oh, he's given it up. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, as, as, far as, <laughs> as far as the press are concerned, uh, are you very, very careful in what you're saying, or are you just having a, a honeymoon with them, and it's not a problem? No, it just depends what they ask us, you know. If, uh, we pretty much tell the truth. Depends what they ask us, you know. They, nothing to hide, mate, look. Nothing. All clean. Clean. All clean. Never touch it. Actually, the Wings thing is a bit of a cooperative in many ways as far as the songwriting is concerned, and I know, how many songs have you written with Paul? 
Yeah, but half a song. Just half a song, is that all? Yeah, yeah I do most of the writing. Sure, actually, yeah. Yeah. But everyone looks in, you know, Jimmy's written, he wrote Jimmy's on written. The, Venus and Mars. Denny's written half the song. For their yeah, songs. Yeah, he's getting good. good. Denny's getting good. He's written half the song. <laughs> yeah, haven't you, Denny? Mind you, he's been in the business 20 yeah, years. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. getting there. Slowly but surely. How are you enjoying Australia? Have you seen much of the country or not? Well, I've met a lot of old friends that used to live in England, and I don't blame them for moving over here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got the weather, you got nice people. You, 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 made, you made a tour of Britain before you came out here. Yeah. And it was described, the one quote that came up was that you were doing it as a dress rehearsal for the Australian tour. Well, I mean, naked. any tour, <laughs> any tour is a dress rehearsal for the next tour, you know. Yeah, in that sort of context. Yeah. But it how, just happened to be the one before this, you know. How important is a tour of Australia oh, to, to you these days? Well, it's great, you know. I mean, uh, it's it's a good tour. They're English-speaking people, you know, and that's a big help to us because if you start you start chatting away, you know, uh, you know, you start chatting away, and they all kind of say, "Who got a book? Who got?" Well, then, you know, you're on a sticky wicket there to uh, tell a joke or anything, you know, so it's handy with the people being very... Mind you, we would have beat you in the test. Oh, well. Why are you doing this? <laughs> if that fella hadn't have carved up the wicket and heading me, we would have done it. You know it, Sue, don't you? Well, you know what? Tommy Gregg, really hot this year. And how much, Scotland! Uh, and Scotland, you've got the farm in Scotland. We do indeed, lots of sheep. Have you spent much time there or not? As much as we can. Summertime, you know, we really? Spend, uh, yeah. yeah. So where's your favourite hand then? Linda, I thought you'd still have one in New York amongst oh, all yours. Scotland's my favourite Really? No uh, question. Scotland, yeah. So, so Scotland you would call home these days? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. London. Pretty much. Britain. And London. London. We, we, have a, we've got a house in London and a house and a farm in Scotland. So oh, it's one in a million. Look out, Australia. Australia. We might be swimming here too. <laughs> <laughs> How good are you when you get to the farm? Do you get very domesticated and do the cooking and everything? Everywhere. I'm very yeah. She is. She's a good cook. She's very domesticated. Very domesticated. <laughs> you've got, a, you've got a, a, a book coming out of photos too. What, what's that going to be about? It starts off in about 1964, 63. Photographs I took when I was in New York, and it goes right on through until today. You know, early rock stuff, Jimi Hendrix, all my favorite. All the early stuff. More a compilation of rock stars and things that happened yeah. in the rock scene. Well, it's all, it's like all Linda's work to date. Yeah, and she started then, and it kind of goes through black and white, colour, then the kids and the family, then wings, comes up to date. You know? Yeah, you had a you had a song written about you, didn't you? Yes. Linda, a Jan and Dean song. What was the story behind that? Well, it was written when I was about five. It was number one in the hit parade. No, really, it was written. But it was sung by a man named Buddy Clark, who was very big in America, but he got killed in a car crash. Mm. And it was number one then, and then Jan and Dean recorded it, and it was number one again. La 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 Dad uh, was the lawyer for the songwriter, and he said, instead of a fee, why don't you write a song for my little girl? Which he did. Yeah. And she got dragged onto television age five. Yeah. And she got stuck on top That's of a piano. And they said, now sing Linda. And she didn't know the words or anything. She's only five and she just cried. <laughs> I felt like I did tonight. <laughs> well, I, I, I was surprised because I didn't quite hear what you did in the group because you don't. You hear a record and, and you, you know the lineup of the group and that's it. But you, you were doing a lot of keyboard tonight. Uh, are you particularly good, or is this something you're yeah. mastering? Some of it she's, she's good. good. Thanks, lad. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I thought your tambourine work was oh, tremendous, but I just wanted to have the keyboard because I couldn't really see it. <laughs> she's I'm learning. Yeah. What, what, right? what, what, what instruments do you play then? Uh, Moog, Arc, Mellotron, electric piano, and organ. Have you you'd think I was good with all those, wouldn't you? Well, it's not bad. At least you can confuse people by changing for a certain yeah. time. Yeah. Blind them with science. But actually, <laughs> you were with the uh, you were with the Moody Blues, right? He was. And I love your name. Oh. And I know it's not your real name. Your real name is Danny. Yeah. Danny Lane. And I want to know, because you had that song, Penny Lane, and I thought, Danny Lane, and then I found out your real name is uh, Brian Hines, right? <laughs> 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 Tell us all about it. He wrote a song about me. Dang, what, good. Penny Lane? <laughs> hey, good Adam. I sent a ketchup. Good Adam. Well, how did you get, how did you get the, uh, the Danny Lane? Mate? I joined the group. It was 
called Jane and Larry the Victim Man. So that is the truth, isn't it? Huh? I mean, join the group that had that Join the group that had the man, Danny. Danny and the Victim Man. Yes. yes. So Danny and the Victim Man. So, you know. Try and feel diplomatic. He was in a band with a lead singer and a group, you know. What is it? Um, <laughs> something in the Beatles, or something like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you, you, I believe you two are, are writing a, a children's movie on Rupert Bear. Are you going to do it as a cartoon, or are you going to do it as a feature film, or yeah. you know, like uh, with live people? Yeah, no, the idea is to do it like Walt Disney used to do his great feature-length cartoons like Bambi and Snow White and all of the great ones. And we'd like to make one like that, using Rupert Bear as the main character, and we'd do the music which would be great for us because we'd be about one and a half hours of music, which would be more than we've ever kind of tried to put together. You know? Yeah. It'd be a great yeah. challenge. A, a great challenge, yes. But what, uh, there was talk at one stage about uh, you doing a movie for Twiggy or even performing in it, the sort of a with 30s Hollywood type movie. No, I think that was The Boyfriend, but she went ahead and did it without us. No, there, there was a... <laughs> there was a no, the one I'm thinking about was called Gotta, gotta sing, sing, Gotta, gotta dance. dance. Gotta Sing, Gotta Dance. Were you involved in that? Dance. Or? Well, actually, she, she's a friend of ours, you know, and she, uh, she just came around and she said, would you do it, you know, I'm doing a thing, and would you do a song for it? And uh, I wrote a song called Gotta Sing, Gotta Dance, which she never ended up doing. I ended up doing on a special called James Paul McCartney, myself. Yeah. So that's the end of that story, Mark. Oh, it certainly finishes it completely. <laughs> Absolutely finished. Well, that, there's, there's, a, there's a song on the uh, the Wings LP, which I can never think the name of, but it's, a, it's the one you did tonight, that 30s number. Uh, you gave me the answer. You gave me the answer. I always get the wrong line as the title for that yeah. one. That's a delightful thing, and you dedicated it tonight to Fred Astaire. Do you know him, either of you? Or is no, we don't that? know him, but we, we know admire him. him. We know of him, like most we people. You know. I love his old pictures. I mean, to me, he's one of the governors, you know, Fred Astaire. I just love him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier about your photography, Linda. Yeah. Was it through your photography that you met Paul in the first place in England? When was that, about 19? 67 or 68? 67. Yeah. 67. Well, I was in London, yes, doing some photographs for somebody else's book, and I met Paul down at the club. In fact, I picked her up at a club. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that, folks. Oh, oh, sorry about that. I said to her, do you want to come to another really club? She said, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so we went down there, I mean... I have to admit yeah, yeah. it now. Yeah, I don't that was, it was just like that. <laughs> yes, and then we got married, and with three kids later, here we are. <laughs> you told us you spent quite a bit of your time in Scotland, and you got the house in uh, London. What's the year divide up into now? Is there much touring involved, or? Well, what we what we try to do is spend uh, summer's pretty quiet time in the music business, you know. So we try and spend right. time up in uh, Scotland in summer. Writing, writing stuff and just cooling out and just getting things together. And then we normally come back down to London sort of at the end of the summer and start grafting. You get very fit in Scotland. It's very outdoors. Paul shears the sheep. We round them up on horseback. It's great life. I was, I was, I was telling one of the newspaper lads the other day, we only just went over to electric clippers. Electric clippers. Yeah, I mean, the Aussies have been, what, they've been doing it now for 10 years. But we used to, until two years ago, I used to shear the sheep with the mate of mine who, who runs the farm. But I used to shear them with the old hand clippers. I, I find that incredible to believe because they're the hardest things in the world to work. But I, think, I think they're easier than the clippers than the electric clippers, you know. <laughs> it's only sometimes you use the hoover. Oh, God. How much do you do the FBI? You, you were very much a New York girl before this, weren't you? Well, I lived in New York. Was, yeah. And I, so I come from New York, but I was never really New York. You know what I mean? New York. New York. New York. I lived in Arizona for a few years. That changed me for the outdoor life. And she's never been the same since. Uh, sure, you know. How, how, how much do you enjoy the touring? Or would you like... I to, because, I mean, you must get caught with more of the domestic hassle than Paul, because I'm, not only have you got him to look after and you, and you both perform on stage, but you've also got three children, right. which are with you all the time. Yeah. How, how do you find touring? you find it exhilarating or exhausting? I love it. The way we've been touring, because we fly to a place like here, then we get to sort of take it easy that night and we play the next day. And it's great because we see the kids a lot, we hang out, we've been staying in houses, which is nice. Get outdoors. I, it's like a night out for me. It's almost like a holiday combined with a tour, you know. 
most people kind of just grind themselves into the ground on the tour, you know, but we've tried to work it out so we've got enough spare time. Yeah. You know. It used to frighten me because I didn't really know how to sing that well or how to play, but now I enjoy it because I'm Probably. falling in with the band. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a good cook, so they're like, oh, she's a good cook. Out, out do you leave a stranger? The, the Japanese tourists off now. Yeah, yeah, Japanese tourists. How do you feel about a thing like that? Because to me, if I may just say it, I think it's totally a bad. totally ridiculous thing to cancel that tour yeah. for something that has got nothing to do with today or your present situation. No, I think so. No. Too. I mean, the, the annoying thing really is the whole kind of thing the whole affair is two years old and uh, in America we, we made a lot of representations and stuff and said to the American government you know, will you let us in and they said the marijuana charge, wasn't yeah. It? yeah and they said yeah okay you know you're a good boy now and so that's okay and uh, so we were allowed in America and Australia Really? Oh, hey. However, well, in, however um, in fact, the, the funny thing is, Australia. the funny thing is, we had our visas for Japan. It's, yeah. a, it's in the passport, it's there, it's stamped. But it's actually, they, they, there's one man in Japan, the Minister of Justice, who hadn't actually approved it. And he's the man who's decided not to approve it. So he's a bit, uh, oh, he's no friend of mine. Whoa! Well, we'll leave it on that. Japan's relationship with Scotland seems to be an end. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Lovely to have you back in yeah, Australia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Australian coppers. We can talk to you. Like that? No? Goodbye, Mark, and all your viewers. Goodbye, Bye, Mark. Yeah.